from the forest that we have not had because some of the best advisors in the United States, counselors, nutritionists, and doctors train our brother by the name of Dick Gregory. All right. Well, did he recommend the Bahamian diet? The answer is yes. And what did the Bahamian diet consist of as a base? Soybean. And didn't Mr. George Washington Carver made plastics out of soybean? Yes. All right, so there's another lesson coming up from uh, Francisco, educational lesson. We're going to jump right back into this. Uh, doctor said the electric food, the only food. Get yourself some electric. So how could he <laughs> give us the Bahamian diet that is soybean based in the name of nutrition? But we cannot blame the Gregory because he's our brother that I know he loves us and we love him. But he was ill trained. The student could only regurgitate that which was learned from the teacher. And if the teacher is poorly educated, then the student likewise. Well, do you think you can start teaching us more now that you've, uh, uh, she wants to ask you a question too, but I want to get this in real quick. Uh, in that you are a teacher, and I look at one of your old, um, one of your old tapes, and I saw how you talked about the carrot and different things, even certain potatoes, I think. Uh, sweet potatoes is all right, but, but the white potatoes are not any good. No, I didn't say that sweet potatoes was all right. That was made too. But there's a certain kind of... Um, the red potato, the, the red rose that was found in Lake Titicaca in Peru. Mm -hmm. That is where the Irish people became acquainted and took it back to Ireland. Because remember, the Irish people were the first to go to Peru. They did a lot of research in Peru and they did a lot of things in Peru. And when they found this potato, the Irish, they took it, it back to Ireland and they began to hybridize the potato and get what you call the russet potato, the red rose, but the natural potato looked like the red rose. The red rose I would recommend that you eat that because it's the first first generation away from the mother, from the base, which came from Lake Titicaca, not a sweet potato. A sweet potato has such a high concentration of nitrogen mm. that it would really be, you know, play havoc on the system. Have you written a book? No, I'm writing one of it, right in that bag. Oh, okay, good. When it's finished, we we'll take it out of the bag and I want to read. The bag has these tapes that need to be transcribed oh, okay. and it will be transcribed as soon as possible to be put into book form right. because the book is needed okay. we have been misled not only by the foreigners that are not part of our race that dictates to us and tell us what we should and should not eat right. but we were also hoodwinked by our brothers that was he was hoodwinked and miseducated you have to understand that not just in history or other parts in everything even health so you have to put another foot forward in order to learn a lot of these things so you can better help and support your people and you need to provide safety to your children and it, knowledge is the only safety about now it's trained by those people well, well. <laughs> the gorilla does not eat the food of a lion but the black race eat the food of a lion. True. <laughs> so we can't eat Chinese food. Well, we can't eat Caucasian food. We're not Caucasian. We're not Chinese. We are black. And what does that mean? Well, I use the word black, and, and I use that too loosely. Because I don't like the word. What's a good word? I don't even know why I call it ourselves anything. The shadows. No, I am. You call me Negro. You call me nigger. You call me color boy, you call me black, you call me African. I'm not an African. Because the continent was not named Africa until a white man named it Africa. So what are we? Thank you very much. <laughs> she has a question for you. Yes, I just want to ask because people be talking about Coach Carolina and Lika. So good, I want you to just explain to them that where are you talking from? I'm Bayana. Bayana asked the question about Spirulina and wheatgrass. Spirulina, I mean, where does spirulina grow? It's a hybrid. And what about
about the wheatgrass. Hybrid. Wheat kernels. With eyes. In my embryonic stages, and I must admit it was later than that because I was in New York practicing this thing already, and I was using wheat to produce wheatgrass to be juiced, and here I am with my little cup of wheatgrass juice. I got the best chlorophyll in the world. Man, a little lady, 94 years of age, named Mrs. Holloman, said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> you're not going to recommend that to yourself and to no one else. Why, Mrs. Holloman? Because this stuff is poison. Wheatgrass juice. For just a minute, is wheat natural? I said, no. The fando is natural. The teff is natural, but not the wheat. You make bread out of fendo. You make bread out of the arm, which is the atta, which is the Ethiopian that makes the injera. The brown injera is made from that. But as far as the wheat, oh, we have to remember the amaranth, which is natural. But this thing we call wheat definitely was made in Europe. So now, when we grow this kernel and we squeeze it, we are getting sugar and starch. So in my, my brain tell me, don't use it no more. So what you use? Sprout something natural. So I went and got some amaranth, and amaranth seed could be acquired right now in, in, in Brooklyn. It grows all over the place. You take the little seeds, and you put them on the bed right now, and you cover them with the soil. In 21 days, the wheatgrass sprout, but the amaranth would not sprout in 21 days. Why? The amaranth only sprout once a year in the spring. So I was angry because the amaranth did not sprout. Then the amaranth laughed at me and said, you want me to sprout along with something hybrid? Well, I'm very sorry, I only sprout once a year. Mm -hmm. But the product I produce is food. And that's so us nowadays, you know? Uh, some will take longer, so we we'll deem it inferior. But in actuality, that's the higher quality. But because we're so lazy and everything that we've been taught, we don't want to put in the extra effort or wait the extra time. So we're kicking ourselves in the ass. So we have to, you know, start buckling down and think what is, what's the priorities now? Because our priorities are off. And when the, Amar when the Amaranth sprout came, oh, I was eating Amaranth sprout and I was high. For about three months, I was on this high, this energy, because the molecular structure is complete, and therefore it deems that stuff electrical. If the molecular structure is incomplete, meaning a hybrid plant, it cannot be electrical. If man could make a substance in a laboratory, such as a vitamin, vitamin B, vitamin B, C, C, uh, vitamin B12, inositol, zinc, all this stuff. Hey, look, just a minute. How could you make in a laboratory a substance that would help me biologically or physiologically? If you could do that, and if you could really do that, then you are God. Only nature of God makes something electrical. No man could do that. I will give a simple example. On the planet, minerals are expressed in two forms. One, phosphate one oxide meaning what there are 142 minerals we begin with gold silver opium iron phosphorus silver i mean iron magnesium they come in the form of a rock 142 different minerals in the planet they come in the form of a rock but that rock also have a plant that is representative of that mineral. The plant contains gold. Gold? Mm -hmm. You may ask, well, why should it be so difficult for you to understand that? Don't you take burdock for iron? Yeah. And what's the difference with iron and gold? They're both are minerals. Okay. But now you have them in a plant form. Mm -hmm. Why a plant form? Because the plant, in sending its root into the soil, it converts that solid rock into a liquid digestible substance. The scientists call that process of conversion. Of conversion. 
iantrophorosis. Iantrophorosis could only be accomplished by a plant, not a laboratory. You can't take a piece of rock that is iron into a laboratory and get a liquid from it that's going to be digestible because now it becomes non-electrical. The plant makes it electrical. Now when you drink it, it is pre-digested for you, electrically, so that no one snow you. The minerals that the body needs cannot be found in any health food store. No vitamin C, vitamin B, vitamin A. The body is not made up of any alphabetical order. It is made up of minerals. And when those minerals have been depleted by the presence of disease, a disease ensues. So you have to replace them in a natural form, in the form of a rock or a plant. A plant. You hear that? So all of these nutrients you get comes from the plant changing the molecular structure of the rock from a rock on hard substance to a liquid substance in which it digests pre-digests for you so when you in return use that as a tea or use that as a food you get in this already digested mineral in a liquid form which then your body can easily break down because it's already pre-digested this is the nature, the dynamic that nature has with each other. And we, we consistently come in and wreck it because it's God's, um, it's God's format and we just don't think it's worthy. So we come in there, we mess it up. But the rock and the tree have a um, <coughs> symbi symbiotic relationship. And we we don't understand this that's the problem if we don't take the time to understand this then how are we ever gonna learn it how are we ever gonna live a better way where we're healthier this is the way and the only way is put in some time watch the videos because it is alive and it's electrical why does it have to be electrical because the body is electrical. Mm -hmm. How could you feed an electric body dead food? You just can't do that. That's not consistency. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Sadie. So basically when a person goes to a hospital and they're given so-called treatments. Now, basically we know when somebody is treated for something, they have nothing to do with being cured. And when you have something like the American Cancer Society, they mention nothing about curing people. They're just a cancer society, which is they study, study some more, get some more money, and keep studying, but never really finding a cure. When the cure basically is something that's natural in the ground where the person can heal, heal itself, the body can heal itself eventually. But yet what they do is they propagandize a natural disease and made a big, Multi of course, and they're right 100%. If I was a Caucasian, Thank God. defending my people and my economic position, do you think that I would undermine that position by telling the world, here is a black man named Dr. Sebi that have cured diabetes, sickle cell anemia, yeah. leukemia. Then what's going to happen to his laboratories? What's going to happen to his pharmaceutical laboratories? Well, but why should we be concerned with the American Medical Association? Anyway. Why should we be concerned with that? I know I weren't. And what, what's the name of this, um, this medical thing that goes uh, to your spread name among mm -hmm. our folks? What is this, what's the name of the oh, World Health Organization? Yeah, World Health. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Who? Who? I mean, Joe. What do you think about them? They brought them all, all over the place. That's how. And I was in Washington, D.C. in the year of 1982. And this brother, who is a doctor, who worked for the WHO, personally told me that they threw in the tower 20 years ago. That they knew that there was no cure for any disease. They never had one. 
I mean, the physician didn't go to school to learn to cure anyone. The discipline just doesn't house that. So, again, we should not be bringing them up. Because there's no consequence. The only thing is they're killing our folks over there in Africa. When are they going to learn? They're killing our folks in Africa? Yeah, they're all coming up with AIDS. Where do they get AIDS from? AIDS is a, a thing of the mind. Not for real. It's memory. But the Africa needs to be killed. Oh, well. I mean, coming from, a, coming from Dr. Sebi, to see that his family need to be killed. I know what you're saying. But that's a fact. The African have turned their back on their mother. In fact, the African has never regarded a black woman as being equal to a male. So when you abandon your position, you need to pay the dire consequences. When you abandon your mother, and I'm not talk, talking only saying about the biological mother, I'm talking about that greater mother, Africa. They changed Africa. They made an exchange for Europe in Africa. They deserve to die. Everyone that dies deserves to die, or else you would not be dying. I think you're right. Oh, I know I'm right. They wouldn't be dying now. That's true. <laughs> because what is it about the 144,000 that will, mm -hmm. will so uh, and leave and whatever they're going to do? So you got to have somebody got some sense. Yeah. You, you, I, and it's not there. That's why I said that I would prefer to take a shoeshine boy from New York and put him in the presidency in Africa, in any country, and he would do a better job than those that are there now. Because common sense just step out the window. The Africans doesn't need anything that came from their ancestors. What do they eat? They eat rice. They eat potatoes. Sweet potatoes. No, but they eat the white potatoes. Those that come here, that I've seen, they eat the white potatoes and the rice, and they eat uh, the carrots. Have you ever, have you ever gotten, have you ever tried to put a, a, a salad bowl beside an African before you eat and see if you're going to eat the salad? Well, he's not going to eat it. <laughs> you, you can put a bush rat on some rice. Uh, we have room for one more question on this segment and then we're going to continue. Here's one last question and I think it's very pertinent here. Um, you hear the differences between you and the, the Jafetites, the children of Jafet that are in Africa today. Night and day between you two. And they, they are right now they're so manipulated they don't want they're in this Freemason or whatever secret society and contractual agreement game where they just go with the flow and hope they come out unscathed it seems to be the greatest thing that seems to be plaguing us at this moment and that's AIDS of course everyone knows someone who has it I know someone who has it and um Pretty much, I'd like to get a roundabout viewpoint on, on what you feel about that. Yeah. Well, this book that you raise, if you notice carefully, A. The good news is HIV doesn't cause it. Well, it could. And under here it says Peter Duesberg. This man was the only man that made a statement that was in my favor when I was going through my litigation. This man is a white man. Peter Duesberg said that AIDS was not the result of a man that made a statement that was in my favor when I was going through my litigation. This man is a white man. Peter Duesberg said that AIDS was not the result of a virus, and he agreed with me. I have yet to have a brother, physician, or otherwise, that openly agreed with me. Peter Duesberg did. So, this man was taken, well, he was at the University of Berkeley, California, Duisburg, microbiology, biologist. They removed his grants and kicked him out, but that was okay. Now they have an organization known as HEAL, and he's heading that. It's all over the world now. In fact, someone wants me to get in touch with them because they're looking for me. But this man was right. And the other one, uh, Dr. I can't call his name, and I could see him. He said that 
when he went to Africa and inoculated the Africans with a smallpox uh, vaccine that it was the beginning of AIDS. Polio. Smallpox and polio both, but smallpox was the recent structure. Stracker, Dr. Stracker. And we're going to, on that note, we're going to be right back to the, the, the next segment. You'll see it next week, okay? Hold tight now. Dr. Love and uh, Dr. 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 Roshan and Dr. Prince, they sat in council room until Valentine was one of them to kick me out of New York. A brother, the courage you want to go to New York, well, Phil Valentine did that. Phil Valentine, one of them turned against me, which they really interest the black folks. And there's a brother among us. Say, for instance, 10 of us set out to do research. A nine failed. The brother over here, Mr. Simmons. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the cure for AIDS. What us nine should do? Yes. Come to you. Because you did the research and found it. Sir Valentine, Dr. Love, Kanye, Dr. Prince, Dr. All of them said, good luck. I said, thank you very much. Uh, what about Dr. Barbara Justice? Mm -hmm. she, she don't like mm -hmm. me. And she is right. She should not like me. Yes. And I hope that she see the state. Because Dr. Savi loved the idea that Barbara Justice doesn't like him. Yeah. She has to live with that hate herself. And I hope that the hate does not last too long. <laughs> <laughs> also, at the Million Man March, Dr. Savi, um, there was a, uh, I was there. Well, the, and well, well, she has worked with him, the little guy from yeah. Washington. She's worked with him. Yeah. Are you talking about Dr. Ali? Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful. And Dr. Barbara Johnson said they worked they with a young brother of who they claim they had cured of AIDS for three years of treatment. Well, look what they did to Cameron from Kenya. It's impossible. Santa Cruz. Look what they did to him. Santa Cruz. And he was on the air being cured. And they took him over to Kenya. And because, um, because of his, the lack of money, you know, money always plays the role, and uh, lack of care. I'm going to put that in. That's my word. That Santa could die. He had to. Even if I said Kimron, he would have died. What is Kimron? Do anyone here know what is Kimron? What? ADT. Made right here in the United States, sent to Japan to be put together as a compound, and then taken to Africa and administered. Yes. That's true. See, that's true. Yeah. See, also, years ago, uh, my father got out of the hospital and he was getting, feeling very weak. This was like 1988. And his name? And his name, Professor George Simmons. And I remember my father was feeling very weak and he didn't know what to do. So his friend sent him to Dr. Barbara Justice. And she looked at him and she said, All you can do is really is just pray and wait and wait to die. <laughs> so what happened was a few of my father's friends. Uh, took him to see Dr. Sadie over here. Amen. And my father, if you recall, the first time you met him, he came to your office, told you all his problems. He was this and that. And you, you said that you didn't even look at him. You said you were busy reading something. <laughs> and you told him, don't worry about it. You'll be all right in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. You said you'll be back teaching with, you know, without uh, too much of a problem. And lo and behold, my father followed what uh, you told him to do. And he was back teaching. And he's he's running around now in 1995. <laughs> and now he's down on Durst at your institute. And he went down there with uh, a lot of different maladies, diabetes, uh, prostate, uh, cancer, high blood pressure, uh, you know, a whole bunch of things. And he said within two days of being down there, he was ready to run some Olympic events. And he did. Wow. Yeah. And his sugar was down to 93. What? And they thought it was supposed to be amputated, no longer had to be amputated. What? Mm. All, and his hair was growing back, did he tell you? Yeah. His hair was growing back, where he was falling out. Mm -hmm. The village you are talking about is here. This is the village. Okay, let me hold it there for a few and let's get a nice tight shot of that. Okay, perfect. All right. We see the tanks of the Thermal Waters. This is the Usha village in Central America. 
and you see these tanks that are con that house the water they are holding tanks oh. the thermal water contain a pH of 8.8 .8. it is not like what they have in other places I heard that there's a hot spring in cotton without a bound we don't have a hot spring in Honduras we have a thermal spring and the difference of a thermal spring is that the thermal spring is precipitated by volcanic activity which means that the water has a high concentration of sulfur and phosphorus not so for a hot spring a hot spring is precipitated through a bed of zeolite that's under the ground and as you know that zeolite is a mineral that boils water that doesn't necessarily make a thermal so that makes the difference that one has sulfur and phosphorus and oxygen